Hi guys, welcome back to one of our videos here in Bloomin' Design and you can see here what I'm going to be teaching you today is how to create these nice sort of effect of a, it's a bit of a grunge style here in Illustrator. Now the advantage is as you may know it's going to be a resolution independent, uh, resizing is going to be simple it can be quite uh, handy when applying it to certain logos that require this sort of style and maybe some of you are wondering how to create these now another cool thing is you can see that when I type if I change grunge to hello you can see how the texture stays there so what we're going to do is I'm going to try to break this down this is done in Illustrator you can see all the little outline mode and I'm going to try to we're going to divide this into two videos. The first one it's going to be uh, how to set up the image in Photoshop, and then the second one it's how to do the whole process in Illustrator. So welcome back. Hopefully you enjoy it. Don't forget to go to bluemeloneddesign.com, uh, check more videos on our blog, or please just go to Facebook and like us, and you know write a few comments and see if you like what we're doing. So let's get started. First thing I've got is on my desktop I've got an image and you can see the image is just a JPEG um, what I call wood original and I'm gonna open that in Photoshop it looks like that now if you've got a digital camera you can go down the street and actually use these as uh, you take photos of anything really you can take photos of walls of streets of you know anything you can come across and you know just build your own little library of textures and then hopefully you, if you like playing and for example in this case we're building uh, a branding that requires this, this sort of uh, style so so that's why we actually started to do to do this sort of thing now the first thing I'm going to do with this image is as you can see in Illustrator if I zoom in really quickly um, you can see that I've got the letter and then I've got all the texture going through as if it was a mask. In other words, it's that rough texture is actually hiding part of the letter. Yeah, so that's why we can see the background. In other words, if you're familiar with Illustrator, with Photoshop masking, what we need to focus on is instead of focusing in all this color, we want to make it sort of really high contrast grayscale. So our aim is try to get a texture it's plain black and white. Yeah, that's that's our aim. But using this as a starting point, but at the end we want to make it black and white. So to do that, all I need to do is uh, I'm going to go to my layers, and you need a little bit of knowledge here in in Photoshop. I'm going to duplicate my layer, Command J, and if you look at your blending modes, which is if you click on the drop down menu, there's all these blending modes. When you click on it, you can see how it changes a little bit the behavior of that image, yeah? Because these two layers are interacting with each other. Most likely the top one. So if you go on, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click to overlay to get that nice sort of contrast. So I've managed to increase the contrast of all my image, but still I have too much color. I don't want to have all that color. As I said before, we need to focus on just our grayscale values. So what I'm going to do is I really like to use your adjustment layers. So I can come and adjust it at any time. So I'm going to click the drop down menu and go and click black and white. And you can see that when I go black and white, the whole adjustment layer changes. And as you've seen, this image has got a lot of yellows. So what I'm going to do on my yellow, I'm just going to increase it more. So you can see how you start to sort of increase that. And then on my reds, I'm just going to bring it down a little bit. Uh, you can play, you can use the image you want, as I said to you. Now, as you can see, this is what we had and this is what I'm having now, a little bit of a higher contrast. But the black and white filter is allowing me quite easily to get rid of all the color information. And most importantly, I can come and adjust it at any point. Saying that is if you take this image into Illustrator and do the process in Illustrator and it doesn't work, you can always come here and just change your... Um, adjustment layer. The last adjustment layer that I want to add, it's my levels. So I'm going to go to my drop down menu and click levels. And then on my levels, I'm just going to push this black inside a little bit more. So you can see how, I'm just going to turn this on and off. I'm still focusing on increasing that contrast. Yeah, that's that's sort of my idea. Um, just, and this is something I like to do, just to try this out. I would actually save this as a PSD or 
I would call that instead of wood original, I would call it black and white. Yeah, that's the PSD with layers. But I don't want to use this in Illustrator. And that's because Illustrator can have, it demands a lot of, if I bring layers to it, Illustrator is going to have to read all these layers. I don't want to do that. So I'm going to select all my layers and I'm going to flatten it. So you can select all of them by holding down Shift and Command E. Alternatively, what you can do is click the drop down menu and say that little option which is flatten image. As soon as you do that, what I'll do is I'm going to go and say that as a it could be a TIFF, it can be a JPEG, it can be anything. And I'm going to save that as my wood black and white flattened. And that's the one, I'm going to set it to maximum, and that's the one I'm going to use to try to achieve this sort of effect. Now, so far we just took it into Photoshop, we increase the contrast, we make it black and white, just so when we bring it into Illustrator, we have... Um, more control and we have less information to deal with. Hopefully you've enjoyed this little first part one of how to create this effect. Please join us to do the next one and hey don't forget to write us a comment on you know or keep looking at more of the cool things that we're doing here at Blue Melon Design. Okay bye!